Robert Cahirlock, uh, Minister, Spring 2011, was a, a time of political excitement. And after 14 years of misgovernment, which left a legacy of political corruption, service malfunction and financial destruction, there was a chance of a new start. And the general election in 2011, it was a, an exciting time for me, obviously, as a first-time TD, but it was an exciting time for an Irish electorate who were crying out for change from the tried and failed ways of the previous government. Now, during the election campaign, I recall, <coughs> Fine Gael and Labour tried to outdo each other in portraying themselves as being different from the Fianna Fáil Greens. And the change of government did seem to herald a new dawn, a new way of governance. And perhaps I, I was a little naive, but I believed the now Taoiseach when he said on my first day in the Doyle that there would be openness, transparency, and a willingness to work with the opposition parties and deputies in the interests of the Irish people. Were we really going to see, as I say, perhaps I was naive, but were we really going to see the promised democratic revolution? Now, after nearly nine years and one month, my only question is, where is your democratic revolution? And I'm going to read out just a summary of an email I received from a distressed con uh, constituent just last week. This time, 12 months ago, my father was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. He was a decent, hard-working man who provided for his family and paid his way all through his working life. Over the past year, the situation has become increasingly difficult. Uh, my elderly mother is now my father's carer. My father is in need of 24-hour care and attention. The situation is so severe that my mother's dress size has reduced from size 14 to a size 8 in one year. My father is still very physically active despite his disease. From early afternoon until his bedtime at half ten, he walks laps of the house, attempts to go home even though he's already at home, and is constantly anxious about the farm he has retired from. He has very poor coordination due to the medication he's on, and he's prone to accidents. Only last week, he fell and cut his cheek. Daily tasks are now a, uh, a struggle for him. Shaven has left him with many cuts and scratches. Finding the toilet has caused him problems and has led him to urinating in random places around the house. His HSE transport to day services was withdrawn last month. My 72-year-old mother, a frail, nervous woman who was never the main driver, now has to, try, has to drive dad for respite care. The only saving grace for my mother has been the respite care that my father had been receiving. My mother is 72 years old, and these periods of peace are possibly the only reason she has not fallen sick herself. My mother is saving the state major money by caring for her husband at home, and she's doing it because she thinks it's the right thing to do. One minute, Deputy. My question is this. Is it part of Fine Gael's and Labour's democratic revolution to take respite care from this elderly woman? And what's in the Happy Christmas and the New Year's greeting card to this couple? A reduction of, what is it, 320, 325 in the respite care grant? 250 to 350 on a family home tax? And a continuing reduction in respite care services and transport as the HSE and the voluntary organisations struggle in vain to meet people's needs with diminishing resources? And your only response, Minister, when we in Sinn Féin point out that there are fair alternatives, choices that could be made, is that your benches and those benches shout abuse, abuse at us, abuse that has nothing to do with the cases that we're putting forward.
just like your Fianna Fáil and Greens predecessors. Thank you, Deputy. A Merry Christmas and a healthy and a Happy New Year indeed. Shame on you.